Hello everyone, we are still on the unit on chemical reactions and stoichiometry. Now, in order for us to solve stoichiometric problems, one very important skill that we have to master is how to balance chemical equations. So in this video, we will be applying the law of conservation of mass in balancing chemical equations and we'll deal with a few examples okay so when you say balance chemical equations the number of atoms in the pro in the reactant side must be equal to the number of atoms in the product side so to co coincide or to fulfill the co law of conservation of matter or law of conservation of mass which tells us that matter can neither be no created nor destroyed. It can only be uh, transformed from one form to another. All right, so here is an example of a balanced chemical equation. So take note that the coefficients or the large numbers here, the numbers before the chemical formulas, they tell us about the relative number of moles of the reactants and products. So for example, we read this as 4 moles of ammonia react with 5 moles of oxygen gas to form 4 moles of nitrogen monoxide and 6 moles of water. Or we can either say 4 molecules of ammonia react with 5 molecules of oxygen gas to form 4 moles or 4 molecules of nitrogen monoxide and 6 molecules of water. Okay? So these tell us the relative numbers of the reactants and the products. Now, take note that matter is conserved. Say, for example, the reaction of hydrogen gas and chlorine gas to form hydrogen chloride. So two molecules of hydrogen chloride will be formed. Okay? If you try to look at their uh, atomic masses or the total number of atoms, then they are the same at both sides, so both in the reactants and in the product side. Okay, two H's and two Cl's for both sides. Now, in terms of the mass, okay, so two times 1.0 atomic mass unit, so this is for hydrogen, and then uh, for chlorine, 35.5, and there, there are two atoms of chlorine, you end up with uh, two times. Uh, you must have it equal at the product side, which is uh, 36.5, the mass of the molar mass of uh, HCl. So if you get the total, then they must be equal to each other. Okay, so this is up, this is in in application of the total or of the law of conservation of masses. Okay. And in an experiment, we can also find it here. So I hope you were able to do this also, or in the virtual lab, we'll be doing this. So the law of conservation of mass is observed by the reaction of sodium hydroxide uh, reacting with copper sulfate solution. So by placing, by hanging this, this vial of sodium hydroxide, then we, we are isolating the system in such a way that if we pull the string, nothing will be changed in terms of the mass. However, they will still uh, the chemicals will still react. Okay, and we expect that the mass before and after the reaction will be the same. Okay, so that's one way of proving uh, how mass is conserved in a chemical reaction. Okay, matter is not created nor destroyed. So in here, let us try or practice balancing uh, chemical equations. Uh, so for example, in, exa in this one, uh, magnesium reacting with nitrogen gas to form uh, magnesium nitride. So one helpful tool is for us to uh, list down the elements that are involved. All right. So this is a technique, but if you can do it mentally, then all the better. So we usually list down the elements all the elements involved uh, at the center or below the arrow of the equation and then we find out we find out uh, the number of each element present so in the product side there are three magnesium atoms in in the reactant side there's only one okay now for 
the reactant side nitrogen there are two atoms and then in the product side there are uh, two nitrogen atoms so therefore it's only magnesium atom that we have to balance so what we can do is write okay a factor so that they will be the same okay so three times three that's equal to three and whatever factor we write in here must be reflected as a coefficient for that particular compound or element so in here we now have uh, three magnesium atoms so therefore magnesium has been balanced and nitrogen has also been balanced all right so the balanced chemical equation will be 3mg plus n2, uh, mg3, n2. Uh, how about for this example, Al and Cl3? So again, let's list down the elements present. That's Al and Cl. All right. So in the product side, there's only one aluminum atom and there are three chlorine atoms. All right. And then in here, there's only one uh, aluminum atom and two chlorine atoms. Okay, so sir, how do we make this equal? Okay, we can actually fa uh, uh, interchange these values. So find factors as an interchange of those values. That means if you have two here and if you have three at the other side, we can just place three here and then in this side two okay so it's it's just providing some factors which is from the other side all right so that we will have be able to have six in here for chlorine and then six also here in the reactant side so in doing in doing so we whatever factor we have placed we place we need to put it before the compound so this is 3Cl2 and then since we place 2 here as our factor, then we place 2 before AlCl3. However, you notice that Cl is already equal with the reactant side, so there are 6 Cl atoms already. However, when we place the coefficient 2, then uh, Al becomes affected. So suddenly, in the product side, there are two aluminum atoms already, all right? So what we can do is adjust also the coefficient of the aluminum atom here. We multiply it by two so that they will be balanced, all right? So our goal is to end up with the same number of atoms, all right? So here we have two Al's and six Cl atoms we say that the equation is balanced. All right, so maybe a few minutes to reflect and absorb. You can pause the video. So in this next set of examples, okay, uh, Fe2O3 plus carbon and then Fe and CO. So let's check. So there in terms of the atoms we have iron we have oxygen and we have carbon so let's try to make an accounting for all the elements that are present right so in the pro in the reactant side i have two atoms of iron there's only one atom of iron in the product in the reactant side there are three O atoms and in the product side there are only two okay in the reactant side there is one carbon atom and in the product side there is one so we see that it's oxygen that we have to balance as well as iron so let's say for example we balance iron first so this is times two whatever factor we multiply we place it as our coefficient so this now becomes 2 iron becomes balanced and then oxygen so just like a while ago we multiply this by 3 right so whatever factor we place we also put it before 
the compound so this becomes 3 here and then in that way oxygen becomes 6 and then uh, we notice that carbon gets affected so that then suddenly carbon becomes uh, 3 atoms in here uh, we still have to balance on the other side so this one becomes times 2 right so th this will end up a 6 so whatever factor we multiply we place it before the compound so this is 2 right so what happens uh, in here ox there are already 6 oxygens but there are also 4 irons so suddenly iron in the reactant side becomes 4 all right so what we can do to balance uh, iron is for us to times 2 the coefficient of iron here all right and then for carbon okay there are three carbon atoms already here and then we multiply the carbon atoms with three so that they will be balanced in the reactants and in the product side all right so this all is also three so therefore uh, in terms of our balance equation we'll we'll now have four in here four for iron and then we uh, we check also so suddenly this becomes four in the product side so we check whether all the atoms have been balanced. So there are two, uh, there are four iron atoms. Two times two is equal to four. The coefficient here is also four. So iron is balanced. And then oxygen. For oxygen, there are six atoms in the reactant side. And then three times two, uh, six atoms also in the product side. Okay. So take note that we can distribute uh, the coefficients to each of the atom all right so in here there are six in the product side there are six oxygen atoms uh, how about carbon in here we have in the product side there are three atoms as well as in the reactant side so three atoms therefore our balance equation is 2 Fe sub 2 O3 right so let me just write it down so that it will be clearer uh, 2 O3 plus 3C uh, will produce this time it, we shall now write 4 iron atoms or 4 moles of iron and 3 moles or 3 molecules whatever you are comfortable with of carbon dioxide okay and one final check uh, we must make sure that they they are they have the same number of atoms both in the reactants and in the product side all right uh, last example uh, before I leave you to one task but if you can do it with me so you can just pause the video as well so this is Fe and then Al and then O. So in the product side, I only have one iron atom, one iron. Al here is one. Uh, Al in the products is two. Oxygen here is one. Oxygen in the product side is three. Right, so what we can do is balance aluminum first times two. Right, so we'll have two here. And then uh, for oxygen, we'll need to have 3. So times 3. So the coefficient will be placed here, 3 as well. And then iron gets affected, so this is 3. Alright? And so we... Uh, oxygen here so in uh, we must balance iron as well so times three three here right so iron there are three atoms of iron two atoms of oxygen and three atoms of hydro of three atoms of oxygen and two atoms of aluminum rather 
All right, so that's 2AL, 3FEO, 3FE, AL2, O3. All right, so we say that they are balanced. Now, I'd like you to work on this example. On the next example, you try it out, maybe on a sheet of paper or on your notebook. So how about the reaction of aluminum and hydrogen sulfate to form aluminum sulfate and hydrogen gas? And this is a, com a combustion reaction, C2H6 plus O2, uh, CO2 plus H2O. Okay? You may pause the video. So take note. Uh, thank you very much for answering. So I hope you got the following answers. 2Al, 3H2SO4, Al2SO43, and 3H2. So you notice that for letter E, there are two aluminum atoms, and then there, there are three sulfur atoms, and then 12 oxygen atoms. So 4 times 3 here is 12. All right? And then for hydrogen, there are 6, 3 times 2, then here is 3 times 2, all right? And then for the last example, you have uh, 4 carbon atoms, 4 here, 2 times 2, and then here, carbon is 4. And then H here is 6 times 2, that's 12, so in here, that's 6 times 2, 12. Uh, 14 oxygen atoms, so this is 8 plus 6, that's 14. All right, so take note that whenever you balance chemical equations, it is just the coefficients that you can change. You do not or you cannot change the subscripts of the compounds or the polyatomic ions. So do not do anything to 4 here, do not do anything to 2. All you can change are the coefficients huh? in terms of balancing chemical equations. All right. So that builds up to our next topic, which is actually stoichiometric calculations. These are quantities from balanced chemical equations. But for now, we continue practicing for balancing and yeah, we take a break and have our cup of coffee. Thank you very much.